Hi, and welcome to this edition of Everyday Cucina. If you're asking yourself what the word cucina means, it's kitchen in Italian. So welcome to my kitchen. On today's show, it's all about zucchini. Zucchini, zucchini, zucchini. I love zucchini. So today we're going to be making a baked casserole with zucchini. It was one of my grandmother's recipes. Uh, we're also going to be doing some zucchini and we're going to zoodle it in the noodle maker. And we're also going to bread some zucchini and bake it in the oven for a nice healthy snack or appetizer. So why don't we get started on our baked zucchini casserole. So first what you want to do is you want to take some sauce. It doesn't matter if it's marinara sauce, sauce out of a jar, sauce out of a can, whatever kind of red sauce you like. And you want to put it on the bottom just because um, you want to have your, when you start making your layers, you want to have um, plenty of liquid so that everything bakes well together and nothing's going to stick on the bottom. So as you can see, I'm just trying to spread this around and make it even. Next, we're going to take some potatoes, and I already got some things going because you guys have seen me on the grill, so you know I grill the sausage, so that's what that is, and everything is chopped and sliced and ready to go. So first item is we're going to put the potatoes in, and we're going to layer these potatoes on the bottom of your casserole dish, and I usually use a 9 by 13 casserole dish. Um, this recipe is a recipe that my grandmother and mother made every August when my grandmother's garden started to produce her zucchini. You can bet this was in the oven at least once a week at our house. It was, it's a great recipe for the summer, but it's funny because it's baked in the oven and August is like the hottest, one of the hottest months in the summer. So they usually baked it early in the morning um, and that way they just reheated it for supper. So as you can see, I have everything layered here. Next, we're going to put in our zucchini. And I use a mandolin slicer. I don't know if you guys are familiar with mandolin slicers, but they're really nice because they can make your, um, your slices nice and even like this. So when you have a casserole like this, everything is cooking evenly if the slices are pretty comparable. So we're going to put our zucchini down. Um, when I first made this recipe for my husband um, the first summer we were married, I made it the way my grandmother always makes it, and she doesn't put any meat in it. And my husband, for dinner, always likes to have some type of protein with his dinner. So he liked the casserole, but he wasn't totally impressed because there was no meat with it. And that's the way I grew up, is not having meat with it. And we used to probably just have like corn on the cob or a tomato salad, because the tomato salad was like a staple in my house every day in the summer. And um, so the next time I made it, I uh, did some chicken on the side, and one other time I made sausage on the side. I figured that's a good Italian thing. Well, one day I got the idea of just putting um, sausage inside the casserole. So what I do is I grill my sausage, and then I slice it up, and I put it in the casserole, and he loved it. And that's the way I've been making it ever since. So I have made a little adjustment to Grandma's recipe. I hope she isn't rolling over in her grave. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to put in some green pepper. And green pepper is just going to add a nice little flavor to the casserole and give it a little crunch. And of course, you can't have peppers without onions, so we're just going to add some onions. And of course, every staple, every dish, garlic. Can never have enough garlic. And all the um, amounts that I'm using today will be on HC Mita website or on my Facebook page. Next we're going to do some basil. Sprinkle some basil in. And this is oregano, so we're going to also put some oregano in. Because like I said, this is just sauce from a, a can and there's, there's no um, herbs or anything in them. So just add your own. And you can even add, you can add hot pepper seeds, anything that you'd like to add to this black pepper, which I will do when we're finished. Okay, next is our sausage. Now I grilled some hot sausage and some mild sausage. If you're going to um, put hot sausage in this casserole, I'm going to make a suggestion. The flavors in the hot sausage is going to marry into your sauce for your, for your casserole. So chances are it's going to get spicy. 
So you can do one of two things. You can just add the um, hot sausage without your herbs and spices or go easy on the hot sausage and uh, add all your herbs and spices. So um, I'm going to add some of the sausage in. And I just, you know, throw it around. It, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be very particular because it's going to bake and it's all going to sort of bubble and shift around anyways once it's baking. Okay. And I'll put a couple more pieces on there, why not? All right, so next I'm just going to press it down. That way the sauce is coming through and um, every, everyone's happy and close in the casserole dish. So I'm going to put some more sauce on it because this sauce is going to help all these ingredients to bake. Try to get it evenly. Just spread some more love around here. <laughs> You know, vegetables are, this is such an easy casserole to make. And like I said, even, you know, we made this in the summer. You could probably do it in the winter, too. Um, it's, it's pretty hard. It's hardy enough that, you know, it would be um, something nice to have on a fall day. I am a seasonal cook, so I probably wouldn't make it in the fall. But, you know, hey, everyone does things different, and that's what makes the world go round. So next, we're going to make another layer. Alright, so now what I did was I have everything layered, the potatoes, the zucchini, the peppers, the onions, the garlic, and your spices. So next we're going to put the sauce on top because we want that sauce to cook all of the, our ingredients. And you can be generous with it, but what you want to make sure is that you have something in your oven that's going to catch the drips because the sauce will drip. And just spread this around. We like a lot of sauce because we're dippers, and what I like to serve this with is a salad and bread. Um, my husband loves to dip, and so do I. The Italians are known for their love of dipping bread in their sauce. Just make sure this all goes down in the crevices. That looks good. Don't want to miss anyone. Don't want anyone upset here. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cover this with foil and we're going to put it in a 375 degree oven. Everybody's oven is different. I usually bake this for about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how thick your slices are and how quickly they cook and how quickly your oven cooks things. So cover it with foil. I'm going to go over to the oven. All right, so what we're going to do now is this is called uh, a noodle maker, and you can use this for all kinds of vegetables, carrots, onions, um, eggplant, and zucchini. I like to use zucchini. Um, we're going to make some noodles. It comes with different size blades. I actually like like a um, spaghetti blade, I call it. It's about, it will be about the same size as a spaghetti noodle. Um, it comes with three or four other blades. The only thing I don't like about this is it's one unit and, you know, it's good for storage, but then when you use the machine, you know, your vegetables have water in it and it drips into the machine. You got to clean the whole machine. So that's the only thing down thing I don't like about this one, but there's a ton of them out there that you can try. So um, this rod goes inside your zucchini or your vegetable and there's a hole here. You put it through the hole and you bring this guy up and put it in there and get it in place and you keep your fingers crossed because sometimes the noodles come out in one nice big spiral and sometimes they come out choppy. So I don't know what I'm going to get today, but we're going to pray that it's going to be spirals. All right, so here they come. Here comes your noodles. And good, they're coming out like spaghetti today. That's great. Sometimes, like I said, you never know what you're going to get. Things can be temperamental. Nice. 
You know, there is a lot of different sauces and things that you can do with these spiralizers. It, they're great. They're great for vegetables. If you have a house full of people who love to eat vegetables, um, you can be very creative and you can do many things. Um, carrots are another good thing and they make the dishes look really nice too. They just, you know, it's creative and um, very healthy to do it this way. Um, I like to, like I, I have different sauces that I do with this. I'll do a pesto sauce, I'll do, um, let me get this going. I'll do pesto, I'll do a, um, an olive oil sauce and garlic, what I'm gonna do today for you. Uh, you can do spaghetti sauce. There's all kinds of different things that you can make with this. You know, I always wonder, like with all these food processors and things, I always want my wonder what my grandmother and her her sisters, you know, the people who are long gone, would think about all the machines that we have today. Because, you know, they used a knife, they used a fork, they did have pasta machines, but my grandmother also, um, when she made her pasta, she would make it by hand and she would cut her noodles. And I don't know how she did that because they were always, her noodles were always beautiful and I don't know how she got them to cut slice evenly. I, her granddaughter does not know how to do that. <laughs> Get it going. Get it going on the right direction. All right. So now you have all these nice noodles. And like I said, it's, it's a great healthy dish. You can um, substitute for your pasta. It takes a while getting used to when you stop eating carbs and um, different things. I know I'm always trying to watch um, and I love my pasta and I could eat pasta every night but I really do enjoy this when I make it. So what I'm going to do right now is going to put the, the um, stove on and we're going to get some shrimp cooking for the olive oil and the garlic sauce that we're going to put over this and it's going to take no time at all to do. All right, so next we're here at the stove and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some olive oil into our pan. I've had it heating up. Make sure it's going around. And then I'm gonna add about a pound of shrimp. You just wanna saute that around. Shrimp doesn't take long to cook. It, it, you know, it's like five to seven minutes. Um, once it starts to get that nice pink flavor, you know it's done. So next what I'm gonna add in is I'm gonna add in some onion and some garlic. And I'll use all that because I like a lot of garlic. Saute that around. Usually I use, I have a um, saute pan and I usually use that. The saute pan has higher sides, but I wanted you to be able to see inside the pan and, and see how the shrimp is cooking. Um, so that's why I didn't use that today. I'm just using a skillet, a regular skillet or a fry pan. Um, I've never made it in a black cast iron skillet. I don't know how it would come out, but if someone wants to try and let me know, that would be great. You know, it's good to experiment with um, your kitchen things. I love kitchen tools and gadgets and pots and pans, and I have a lot of them. And like I said, I, I'd be curious to see like what my grandmother would say now about the noodle maker or the food processors or the things that um, we have. My grandmother had a meat grinder, and she used to, you know, grind meat with it. And when she made spaghetti sauce, of course, she made her own meatballs. And I don't remember my grandmother ever making sausage, but she could have. Um, and she had um, another grinder that she would make homemade breadcrumbs after the bread, you know, was crusty and hard a few days and stale, basically, that she made her breadcrumbs out of. And it was great. There was always wonderful flavors in our kitchen from her cooking. And my mother, my mother is a very good cook, and that's how I learned. Unfortunately, when my grandmother passed away, I was only 10. So, but I do remember all the, the flavors and the wonderful food she used to make, especially her spaghetti sauce. I remember she used to put chicken wings in it sometimes. All right, so you can see that the shrimp's cooking up really nice. Looking good. I'm gonna let these cook a few more minutes. 
So see what a nice color they are? They're like that salmony pink color, and that's what you want. And like I said, it doesn't take long at all. And you want to make sure that when you put your garlic in, your oil is hot, but you don't want your garlic to burn. That's why I usually um, put it in towards the end, just so the garlic doesn't burn. Because once your garlic burns, forget it, you got to start all over again. All right, that looks good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to throw this in our bowl so I can get um, the zoodles going in here. And I call them zoodles because they're zucchini noodles. All right. Oh, I got his one going in the hot tub. All right. Next, we're going to add in the zucchini noodles. Now we're going to saute them around for a few minutes. You know, this is a, a nice, quick recipe. I make this a lot when my husband is at home. Um, just because it's quick and it's easy to make for one person and then I can have leftovers the next day It's perfect And sometimes if I make extra, you know when he comes home, I let him have a little bit Toss that around I might add some more oil to it just because it's looking a little dry right now And you don't want it to be dry So just put another little more EVOO in there Let this cook a few minutes more. Like I said, you can put different sauces with this. I love it this way with the, um, the olive oil and the garlic. You can also do a pesto. Um, summer, you know, I've been lucky enough to get at least three cuttings off this basil plant I have. It's huge. So um, I've made a lot of pesto and I've put pesto on this. And I've grilled chicken as a side so my husband can enjoy the chicken. Um, and I've also done spaghetti sauce on this. I do, um, you try, I try to do all kinds of different things. Like I said, you know, you try to, to watch your weight, you try to eat healthy. And this is one way that you can do it um, with the zucchini noodles. There, there is no calories. The olive oil is very healthy for you. The shrimp is a healthy thing to eat. Um, so. And I think it's looking good. Lastly, what I do is I love sun-dried tomatoes. These sun-dried tomatoes are, they're beautiful. They're nice. They're a deep red. You get them in the grocery store in the produce section. Um, you can get them with olive oil or you could get them dry. I like them dry just because I like to add them to my dishes with olive oil. If I get the ones with oil, then I, I'm usually making like a, a tapenade or um, some kind of um, spread for bread. And what I do is I just stir these in there, and you just need to let them heat up. Coat them, you know, make sure they get coated with the olive oil and the garlic. And, I'll, and then last but not least, in a couple minutes, we'll throw the shrimp back in and, and give it one quick last twirl. Oh, it smells good. You can smell the tomatoes and definitely smell the garlic and the onion. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the shrimp in. Get that juice out. Shake that around. Get these all coated up. All right, I think it looks good. And um, if, if you notice, like the zucchini got a really nice green color to it once it started cooking. It was a little, little white when we put it in the pan. Now it has that pretty green color. And then you have the nice of the red of the, um, the sun-dried tomatoes. And the shrimp is nice and salmon-y pink. And it almost looks like an Italian flag with a little bit of white in it. Just put it in there, and there you have it. And when I serve this, we'll put some Asiago and Parmesan cheese on it. Before I go any further, and I forgot to say this at the beginning of the show, but I, I think everyone has seen this beautiful hand-painted um, apron I have on. And this was, I feel like I'm wearing a big hug today because this is from my nephew, Robbie. And I wanna say hello to Robbie. And um, it has every pasta you can imagine painted on it. Um, orzo, ziti, farfalle, fettuccine, 
it's just beautiful. Um, I know he's been waiting for me to wear it, and I didn't want to wear it until he came up because I really want him to have him on an episode. And But he's a football player, and he's very involved with football, and right now it's football season, so he probably can't come up for a while. But I wanted to wear it today, Robbie. I love it. I get compliments on it when I wear it. So thank you for the hug and the apron. So this next dish is going to be what I love, and this is a great either appetizer or snack. Um, this is going to be a baked zucchini. And back home, a lot of the restaurants, when I say back home, my back home is Houston, Pennsylvania. It's a small town southwest of Pittsburgh, PA. And go Bucks. So, um, and Steelers, because I am a Steelers fan. Now nobody will probably watch me here in New England. Um, but this recipe um, is sort of a healthier version of the fried zucchini that you can get at some of the local restaurants um, on their appetizer menu. Um, a couple of the places have this fabulous fried zucchini. They're long, they're thick, they're fried, and they're fabulous. So this is my version here of a healthier, um, a healthier way to eat the zucchini. Um, this is a mandolin slicer. I have a couple different ones. This is one a little more fancy. You can do a little more with this one, but you know what? I've had this one for years, and I bet this thing is 20 years old, and I love it. And so this is the one I use a lot more of, um, just to do like a straight slice. And this is what I use to make the zucchini casserole. So it does have a safety with it, but of course, I don't have the safety right now, so I'm going to try to be really careful and not cut my fingers. But all you do, is it's considered a mandolin slicer, and you just slide it down. So I peel the zucchini and I get it all ready to go and then I just, just slice them. Uh, funny story about zucchini, my brother and I are like two different eaters. Rob is very picky and I am not, obviously. And So growing up, uh, my dad's sister Evelyn always made these zucchini cakes and they were chocolate. So one day we were visiting my Aunt Evelyn and Uncle George and of course Rob and I were with my dad. And um, she said to Rob, do you want some chocolate cake? And Rob's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd love some. And he was just little. I don't know. He was about five, six, seven, somewhere in there. So he ate that slice, and then he ate another slice. Well, come to find out years later that it was a zucchini cake. And I thought it was so funny because my brother does not eat zucchini. Even if we go out in a restaurant, they get the fried cheese sticks and, and fried mozzarella sticks. So um, I get the zucchini to myself. So what I'm going to do now is this is just egg, um, and then I'm just going to dip it in some panko breadcrumbs, seasoned panko breadcrumbs, and some um, a cheese mix. And I, you know I like the the Parmesan um, and the um, Asiago cheese. And I grate it myself. I like freshly grated cheese. I just think it it's um, just so nice and. I don't like things sitting around on, in grocery store shelves and, and probably because growing up we always had grated cheese and it sort of spoils you. So um, that's why I like it. You know, I, 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 really, I really enjoy cooking and I hope that from this show you pick up on a couple things that you might like to do or create or you know be more creative in your cooking and I'm always looking for suggestions and I do have a Facebook page so if you go to Everyday Cucina on Facebook and like me um, you can give me some suggestions that you would like to see or even you know some feedback on how you like the show um, it's been it's been a lot of fun doing this this is episode six and um, I hope I can continue to do it for a while So as you can see, I'm finished with the zucchini. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run over and throw it in the oven. Your oven needs to be on 475 degrees, um, 425 degrees, I'm sorry. Um, and these will probably cook for around 10 to 15 minutes. Because they're, thin, they're nice and thin, they're going to cook quick. All right, so what I just did is I, um, I took the cheese and I sprinkled it over the casserole, and we're going to let it cook a few more minutes just so the cheese melts and gets nice and bubbly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the zucchini and plate it for um, our little snack here. And the breadcrumbs made it nice and brown. 
and I like I like the crunch that'll be on this. The cheese melted into the zucchini. And I also made just a little horseradish dip on the side. And that recipe will be on the website as well. Um, and all it is is it's, it's a cup of mayonnaise. Um, I use Hellman's. Uh, a dash of Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of um, white wine vinegar. And um, mix it all up and there you have it. Oh, and you have to put the horseradish in. Can't forget, that's about a quarter of a cup of horse, horseradish. Um, a lot of places back home do um, serve this with um, the horseradish sauce, and some also give you marinara sauce. So it's, it's up to you on what you like. You can serve it with the marinara sauce, or you can have the horseradish sauce. I personally like the horseradish sauce. All right, so I'm going to take this casserole out. It's ready to go. Yep. Cheese is melted. Oh, it smells so good. Smells really good. And it's bubbling. That's exactly what you want. Ah, nice. The dish gets a little messy. I guess I fail on the presentation, but the taste is going to be awesome. It smells just like my grandmother used to make. It looks almost like what my grandmother used to make. And the sausage, um, when, you, when you put sauce, um, I'm sorry, when you put sausage or cook any meat in sauce, it does change the color of your sauce a little bit. It turns a little orangish red. So that's what we got going here. So there you have it. You have the zucchini casserole that grandma used to make. You have the yummy, yummy um, zucchini noodle shrimp and olive oil and garlic, and you have the crunchy um, zucchini bites. Perfect, perfect for zucchini if you love them. So there you have it. You have grandma's zucchini casserole. You have the zoodles noodle zucchini with the shrimp, sun-dried tomatoes and garlic, and you have the zucchini bites um, that are nice and crunchy and healthy for you. And don't forget the bread. You need bread in order to um, eat some of the sauce here in the casserole. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Everyday Cucina. Manja. So if you like what you saw on this episode, or you'd like to have some cooking tips, or you'd like for me to make something on my show that you like, you can contact me via Facebook at Everyday Cucina, the recipes will also be on the HC Media website.